Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we will master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on dividing integers. This is the last video in this playlist on integers. So please, if this is, if you're just joining the playlist and you haven't watched adding, subtracting, multiplying, and all about absolute values and integers, you might want to start there. If you are a pro at integers and you're just doing a refresher on dividing integers, you've come to the right place. So today we will learn about dividing integers. You're going to learn the rules. Students are also going to evaluate algebraic expressions involving integers. We're going to put it all together today. Our question today, and what I want you thinking about as I proceed through the lesson, is how do you know if a quotient is positive, negative, zero, or undefined? So unlike the multiplying lesson, we have added a fourth possible quotient. Let's talk about division. A quotient is the answer to a division problem. So anytime you're asked to divide, your answer is called the quotient. This is an example of a division problem. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, it looks like a fraction. Well, a fraction bar is the same as a division problem. It's asking you negative 10 divided by five. So this could be read negative 10 fifths, but it's also a division problem. This fraction bar is the same as seeing a division symbol. This would be the same as writing negative 10 divided by five. Now let's talk about this negative sign because now we have integers. So here I have an example of a fraction where the negative signs in the numerator. This would be the same as saying 12 divided by negative six. You would get the same quotient. So here the fraction has the negative sign in the numerator. Here the fraction has the, the negative sign in the denominator. And it could also be the same as putting the negative sign next to the fraction. All three of these fractions still represent negative 12 over 6, or negative 12 divided by 6, or 12 divided by negative 6. It's all the same. You're going to get the same quotient of negative 2, and we'll show you how. So just make sure that you have one negative sign that you keep track of it, and it could be the numerator, denominator, or next to the fraction. Let's talk about the division properties of zero. There's two different scenarios here we want to talk about. The first is any value divided by zero is undefined. So here's an example, four divided by zero. And our only answer that I will accept from my students is the word undefined. They need to learn this, be able to spell it, and be able to come up with it when they see this problem. Here's the whole idea to division. When we ask to divide something, we're being asked to put it into that many groups, equal numbers of groups. So let's think about this four as being cookies. My students love to talk about cookies. So I have four cookies and I'm being asked to divide them into zero groups. Well, I can't do that. I have four cookies. So the smallest number of groups I could do is one group. So it's almost nonsensical. You can't have four cookies divided into zero groups. So the answer is undefined. And let's just make a special note here. It would be meaningless to ask somebody to divide any value by zero because we cannot create zero groups. So if your whole mindset is you go back to what you're really being asked to do and probably what you did when you learned division back in second and third grade was that you had probably some tiles or some blocks and you were asked to divide. So you took all your gro groups and you, your blocks and divided them into X number of equal groups. Now let's talk about zero divided by any value. That will always be zero. If I have nothing, I can make zero groups. That makes sense. It might not make sense for somebody to ask you to take nothing, divide it by six, and ask you how many groups you are, how many objects are going to be in six groups. It does seem nonsensical, but at least you can say, well, I have nothing, so it's going to be zero groups. Here is our first of two rules. Dividing integers with the same sign. 
the quotient of two integers with the same sign is always positive. Two positive values, 6 divided by 2, is going to yield a positive 3 quotient. Then we have negative 6 divided by negative 2. They're both negative, so they're the same sign. You're going to get a positive quotient of 3. So here's a pictorial of our rule. A positive divided by a positive, same sign, positive quotient. Negative divided by a negative, same sign, positive quotient. I hope you're being making a connection that this is the same as our rule for multiplying integers with the same sign, and it absolutely is. So if you multiply or divide integers that have the same sign, your product or quotient will be positive. Your turn. I would like you to find the quotients. Pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Same sign. They're both positive. So simply divide and your quotient is positive. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Here I have two negatives. Negative 12 divided by a negative 3. Same sign. Positive quotient. 12 negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4. Now let's talk about dividing integers with different signs. The quotient of two integers with different signs is always negative. Again, connection to multiplying. Multiplying and dividing integers with different signs, your product or quotient will always be negative. So let's look at some examples. I have a negative divided by a positive, and I get a negative quotient. Then I have a positive divided by a negative, different signs, negative quotient. Here's our pictorial to represent the rule. Two different signs, negative divided by positive, negative quotient. Positive divided by a negative, different signs, negative quotient. Your turn. Please pause and come back after you found the quotients. Welcome back. Two different signs, so my quotient is going to be negative 5. Here I have two different signs. 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. So now I'm going to ask you to try this one. I have 4. might take you a little longer. That's okay. Remember what we've learned today. If you need to rewind the video, go ahead and do that. But right now, pause, find these four quotients, and come back with your done. Welcome back. Two different signs, positive divided by a negative, 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. Same sign, positive quotient, 15 divided by 3 is 5. Negative 15 divided by negative 3, also 5. 0 divided by 13, 0. 14 divided by 2, same sign, positive quotient, 7. Let's try some more. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. 8 divided by 0. I wonder if I got you. You cannot take 8 and divide it into 0 groups. The answer is undefined. Negative 32 divided by negative 4, same sign, positive quotient of 8. Negative 49 divided by 7, different signs, negative 7. Here we are. We're going to evaluate algebraic expressions. So now think about this as order of operations. We've talked about PEMDAS, parentheses, then exponents multiply and divide from left to right, add and subtract from left to right. So we're being asked to evaluate the expression when x is equal to 8 and y is equal to negative 4. So again, we're going to put together adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing integers all together here. So we're going to replace the x in this expression with this positive 8, and we're going to replace the y with this negative 4. These are algebraic variables that can stand for any number, but in this problem, they're asking us to specifically replace them with these. So I'm going to rewrite 
I replaced the 8 with, instead of the X, I wrote the 8. And the Y with a negative 4, I put it in parentheses because it's negative. So now, using order of operations, I'm going to clear the exponents first. So I have 8 squared here. 8 squared is 8 times 8. So let's do this. Please do these one step at a time. You can't use too much paper when you're doing all of this math. 10 subtract 64 because 8 times 8 is 64 and we still need to divide the negative 4. So we have subtract and we have division. The next thing to do is multiply and divide in order from left to right. So our next math would be 64 divided by negative 4. That is negative 16. So I have 10 subtract negative 16. If you've watched my video on subtracting, we learned a rule. We're going to keep 10, change the subtract to add, and add the opposite. And the opposite of negative 16 is 16. Adding the same sign, so 10 plus 16, positive 26. Your turn you're going to evaluate these three algebraic expressions. And I'm asking you to replace a with 18 and b with negative six. Please pause, try all three, and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So let's start with the first one. I'm gonna replace a with 18 and b with negative six. Again, because it's negative, I put it inside of parentheses. So it's 18 divided by negative 6. Two integers with different signs, so my quotient is going to be negative 3. Over here, I only have a. There's no b in this one. So I'm going to take the 18 and replace the a. So 18 plus 6 divided by 3. I need to first evaluate, simplify that numerator. So 18 plus 6 is 24. Then I have 24 divided by 3, both the same sign, so positive 8. And our final one, I'm going to replace the b with negative 6 and the a with 18. So I'm using parentheses because I have a negative value, squared, and 18. If this is unfamiliar to you, my previous video, I explain about powers and exponents and bases and the multiplying integers video. So negative 6 squared is negative 6 times negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. 36 divided by 18 is 2. So there you have it. Those are our rules for dividing integers. I hope you wrote some of this down and you won't forget about dividing by zero being undefined. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and register for notifications. Have a great day.